Next on Worcester News tonight, a Shrewsbury man facing charges and a woman's death in the city. What the victim's mother is saying. Plus, it's been 25 years since Holly Perrinian was killed. Her family is still looking for answers. Good evening, I'm Olivia Lemon. A local man is charged in connection to the death of a woman who investigators initially thought had drowned. Today, the 33-year-old faced a judge on serious charges, while the victim's family is looking for justice for their daughter. Our Roslyn Flaherty was in court today and joins us now with the latest. Roslyn? Olivia, it's unclear how the two knew each other. The man admitted they were together, but denies strangling her. 33-year-old Joseph Del Rimple shakes his head in Worcester District Court. He is charged with strangling Marlene Blue. Her body was found in Lake Quinsigamond almost a week ago. The sedent's hyoid bone uh, in her neck was fractured. It was some trauma observed to the back of the neck as well as uh, the front forehead area. Prosecutors say he was the last person to see the 38-year-old alive, and witnesses say they saw the two together. Del Rimple admitted to police he met Blue at the park. He also admitted the two had sex, but he denied strangling her. Blue's family was visibly upset outside the courtroom. I've gone through the, the crying and the numbness. Now I'm just pissed. Police originally thought Blue died of an accidental drowning. But her mom, Deborah Christensen, says she knew something was suspicious. Marlene could swim very well. This isn't Del Rimple's first run in with the law. According to court documents, he was charged with assault and battery on his girlfriend in 2010. The charges were later dismissed. We went to his house Friday, but no one answered the door. It's unclear what the relationship was between Del Rimple and Blue. Christensen says she doesn't know Del Rimple and only wants justice for her daughter. If nothing else I can give her, I can give her justice. Now he's being held without bail and we'll be back in court August 8th. Roslyn Flaherty, Worcester News Tonight. A 21-year-old Worcester man is arraigned on multiple charges Friday for his role in a fatal pedestrian accident. Prosecutors say Tyler Hamilton was texting behind the wheel just before he struck and killed Gabriella Lowell on Grafton Street in June. They say Lowell was in a crosswalk when, we, when she was struck by Hamilton's car. He is charged with motor vehicle homicide by negligent driving. Hamilton is due back in court September 11th. It's been 25 years since Holly Peranian was reported missing. The 10 year old was on vacation with her family in Sturbridge when she and her younger brother went to look for puppies. Her brother returned, but Holly did not. Her grandmother says she hopes there is someone out there who saw something or knows something and is willing to speak up. We're hoping that it will jiggle somebody's mind. Maybe there was something that they didn't think was important at the time. But now when they think back over 25 years, you know, there may be something and we would appreciate a call. Holly's remains were found in Brimfield a few months after she went missing. No one has ever been charged in the case. Anyone with information is asked to call the Hampton County State Police Detective Unit. A state representative seat is open in the 17th Worcester District after Kate Campanelli announced her run for the Register of Deeds. Three Democrats and one Republican are running. All have goals to help improve the district. And for the Democrats facing a primary election, the time is now to make their case to potential voters. Our Brittany Schaefer joins us live now with more. Brittany. Olivia, the primary elections are a month away and candidates are hard at work campaigning. They say it'll be a busy month of door knocks and speaking with the community. The race is heating up between Democratic candidates for state representative in the 17th Worcester District. Pam Jem, Stu Loosemore and David LaBeouf are hoping to win the primary election next month. I'm a little biased. Voting for me is maybe a little bit more important than voting for other people. Vote for Pam Jem September 4th for sure. Plugs aside, the candidates are all serious about improving the district. All three are campaigning for more school funding, but also have different priorities. They have universal pre-kindergarten. There are so many families in our district that are spending more money on their daycare payments than their rent or their mortgage. I see firsthand being a social worker what the opiate crisis has done, and that's an issue I'd really love to work on. We're making sure that we have high quality, good paying local 
jobs. The 17th Worcester District is the only contested race in the city. The candidates say it's all about representing the community. Ultimately, as a representative, you're there for them. You're there to represent them. You're there to fight for them. It's the people that matter to me. I put people before politics. I'll be a champion for the issues that matter most to the people in the 17th Worcester District. It doesn't matter what neighborhood you live in or what your zip code is. I will always be there listening and I'll always be there standing up for you. Paul Fullen is the Republican candidate. He's going into the primaries unopposed on September 4th. Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight. A ballot question on whether or not the city should adopt the Community Preservation Act will be put off until next year. According to the Telegram, the group pushing for the question has decided to not pursue the initiative petition route. Instead, they are deferring the question until next year. The act allows cities and towns to add a surcharge on local property taxes. The money would be used for things like financing historic preservation projects and park improvements. The site of a potentially new marijuana shop in the city has some residents concerned. They say they weren't made aware of an informational meeting this week, while others say it would benefit some people medically in need. Our Chandler Walsh joins us now to explain. Chandler. Olivia, neighbors were heated at a community meeting last night with many opposing the proposal. At large counselor Constantina Lukes says she doesn't expect them to cool down anytime soon. A recreational marijuana dispensary proposed for Chandler Street would be located on the site of this Rite Aid pharmacy. At large counselor Constantina Lukes says the idea of nature's remedy setting up shop here has neighbors angry. The neighbors considered a violation of the quality of life that they've enjoyed and that has been chipped away in the recent years and they don't want it chipped away anymore. Councillor Lukes is a 40-year resident of the area. She says there is drug activity on the streets and is concerned a pot shop would make matters worse. It's a wrong business for that area, only because it may intensify some of the problems the neighbors already see is occurring. Holistic nurse Margaret Campbell lives near the proposed site. She says she doesn't believe it will pose any trouble. I'm you happy to walk my dog and see that people are getting medication better than prescription drugs or better than alcohol. The city says Nature's Remedy is in the first stage of the application process and they need to review the location and proposal before making a community host agreement. Councillor Lukes and some residents say the location is not right. They should be in a strictly commercial area. They should be in an area that doesn't have that intense residential youth um, activities going on. What is this setting a trend for altogether? Are we trying to be more hip? Are we trying to be more in step? We reached out to Nature's Remedy through email and social media and have yet to hear back. It's important to note the city says there are 50 to 100 companies like Nature's Remedy applying for spots in the city. Only 15 will be chosen. Chandler Walsh, Worcester News Tonight. The question still remains, will the Pawtucket Red Sox stay in Rhode Island or move to a ballpark in Worcester? According to the Telegram sports writer Bill Ballou, Worcester's plan to bring the Paw Sox to the city may be unveiled as early as two weeks from now. The city council is scheduled to meet on August 21st. Any proposal would require their approval.